Hi, this is Ruben Major. I'm an instructor, program director for Arizona and the chief executive officer of EMS University. And we're going to be discussing patient assessment in this particular area. Uh, the first subsection in patient assessment is a scene size up. And scene size up, we're just going to go over the very brief preliminary steps that you're going to take for every scene that you go on. And if you've looked at some of the other sections, um, you'll, you'll know and understand that, apologize for that, uh, scene safety is the most important thing that you can possibly do in any given scene. And not only that, but taking into consideration and account your own personal safety is the most important thing that you can absolutely do. So remember, there's nothing as important as your own safety. And your observations, decisions, and the actions set the entire foundation for the call. So scene safety is critical. In the event that you feel your life's threatened, you should remove yourself, your partner, or anyone else from the scene, taking care that uh, it's feasible under the circumstances. So again, if you feel like your life is in danger, uh, you need to get out of there, get your partner out or anyone else that you possibly can get out without further compromising your own safety. So scene safety starts with body substance isolation. So again, that's putting on your gloves, your masks, your gown, depending on the circumstances and what warrants whatever equipment necessary. For you, for you to protect yourself. And then also planning, making sure that you're carrying your radio and knowing what you are supposed to be doing out there on the scene as well as what your partner is supposed to be doing. You should be observing the scene itself and checking to make sure that if weapons are there that the scene is secure or that if you do find that weapons are in, in the particular area once you are on the scene that you contact the police department and then do everything that you can to secure yourself and your patient if possible as well as your partner. Uh, also make sure that you know where your exits are and pay particular attention to any mobs where say you have a whole bunch of people that have gathered together and they're angry. Just really want to be careful in those types of situations because those crowds can turn against you and then look and see are people you know any particular uh, vi are they violent in a violent state is there any signs of intoxication or drug use and the reason why we want to take these things into consideration is we don't know exactly how they're going to be acting if they're intoxicated one minute they might be happy the next minute they might be very upset and then you have a fight on your hands. So scene safety is all about kind of anticipating whatever needs that you might possibly have. And again, if you think there's a possibility that there could be an issue and you're already on scene, make sure you call for backup and call for police department help. If there is anything else that's unusual on the scene, just be on the lookout for it. You'll know what this is after running many, many scenes. And a lot of, a lot of you guys I already know exactly what, what I'm talking about right here. So there may be un, un, unusual situations that you'll encounter in the scene. In the case of un, an unsafe scene, you're going to react, meaning that you'll retreat, uh, radio, and then reevaluate. So we kind of mentioned that briefly. If you have a situation which you find is dangerous, you're already in the middle of it, you need to get out of that scene as soon as possible to make sure that you protect yourself. Please also keep in mind that you do have somewhat of a duty to your partner and to the patient as well. So if they're in your care, you need to do anything that's reasonably possible to maintain their safety, but also taking into consideration that there is only so much that you're trained to do and capable of doing. So. Just know what your bounds are, your restrictions, and your duty. You're going to write. You're going to radio for help once you have uh, put yourself into a position where you can do that, and then 
reevaluate the situation and try to figure out what you need. You're kind of starting over from square one at that point. What is the nature of the problem? Well, if it's a trauma patient, what we're looking at is the mechanism of injury. So what was it exactly that caused the patient to get injured in the first place? And what were the outside forces? You know, was this a car accident? Was this a stabbing? Was this somebody who was thrown from some type of a ATV? You know, we're just really trying to figure out where did the mechanism of injury occur? How did it, how did it happen? And that, this kind of gives us a good idea as to what our treatment might be later on. For the medical patient, it's important to ascertain what the nature of the illness is, their medical problem and previous history. Well, when you're assessing a medical patient, very briefly, we're going to want to get to the bottom of the situation. We shouldn't just ask general questions of all of our patients, but we should really get specific and find out a little bit more about their illness and why is it that they feel the way that they do and what is it exactly that is causing the problem? Have they had these issues before in the past? All too often providers will fail to ask if a patient has had a problem in the past. It's very important. And not only that, but what is the recent history of this medical uh, condition? Did the patient have this condition? And so now, or over the past couple of weeks, and they've been to the doctor already, or they've been to the hospital, and they've already talked to other providers about it. It's always nice to get this background information so that you can kind of tell where the patient is at in the process. So very important what is the medical problem and then what is the previous history and then not only the not only the previous history of the actual present illness but what is the previous medical history of the patient uh, do they have a history of heart disease do they have a history of diabetes those sorts of things will help you put the pieces of the puzzle back together or together so that you can figure out what happened Going back to trauma, the kinetics of trauma uh, say that when weight is doubled, energy is also doubled. And when speed is doubled, energy is quadrupled. So this tells us right here that speed is more of a factor than weight. So speed does kill, in some sense, a lot faster than if we're just discussing weight. Now again, these are all relative forces. So our measurements of weights do have a bearing on what our calculations are. However, according to our calculations, this is what we find. Take note in any situation, what is the body position? Where is the part of the body been impacted? And if there was a penetration, what was the object that penetrated the body? And is if it's still intact, we'll talk a little bit more about treatment if you're going into the uh, trauma section, but also making sure to secure those particular areas if there is penetrating trauma that's still um, inside the patient. And then surface body lands, or sur surface body lands on. So did the patient get ejected from a vehicle and fall on the asphalt or did they get ejected from a vehicle and fall on the grass? Those are two completely different surfaces and again obviously if it's the asphalt that could be a lot worse than if they fell on the grass. What were the distances involved? How far did the patient get ejected? You know, did they did they get thrown from a vehicle you know from a uh, 40 yards or did they get thrown 40 feet? Or was it even less? So all this stuff is important to know. For car crashes, the basic mechanism of injury on type of collision and add in other factors, so such as speed, etc. But also, you know, when we look at car crashes, we, we do want to slow down and take a look at the scene. This is all happening before we actually get in there to treat the patient. 
is this a head-on collision? Is this a rear impact, side impact, uh, vehicle rollover? What exactly happened? And obviously our most deadly car accidents are going to be the head-ons and followed by our vehicle rollovers without seat belts on and then side impacts, rear impacts, and rotational impacts. And then finally seat belt collisions with the, where there's a rollover concern. So it's kind of an interesting thing how deadly rollovers can be when you don't have your seat belt on. So you can you can obviously think of the cadex trauma when you're discussing those types of issues. Okay, so motorcycle crashes are particularly gruesome type of vehicle crash for the most part. Uh, the mortality rate for people who ride motorcycles isn't that great. It's actually 1% fatality rates per year for each year that somebody rides a motorcycle. And it doesn't decrease based on the number of years that you have experience riding it. It just increases every single year. Uh, motorcycle crashes, obviously, for the most part, are head-on. It, is, it isn't unusual to have an angular impact, and ejections are very common. Sometimes they'll lay the bike down, which can be a good thing, and it might not be a good thing really just depends on the actual mechanism of the specific injury itself. For motor vehicle accidents in general, you should place a warning device, such as a flare 500 feet in each direction from the collision scene. So this applies to any type of vehicle crash. For fall injuries, uh, f falls account for more than half of all trauma-related accidents. So you know, we can be talking about falls that are very dramatic and far, or we can be talking about falls which occur from a stationary location. Uh, the distance of the fall is really what, what matters. So, you know, if you're talking, you know, a, a fall that's over twice the height of a person you know, you can see that the significance of the injury could increase quite exponentially. So, you know, th these all of these types of things we need to keep in the back of our minds when we're doing our trauma assessment, but we also need to keep them in the back of our mind during the scene survey, scene size up, so that we can figure out exactly what kind of a route that we might be going down. What interrupts the fall? Uh, was the fall interrupted? Say, you know, somebody fell out of a tree and their fall was interrupted by branches. That can be kind of a good thing in some ways. Um, or did they just plummet all the way down to a concrete floor? Uh, and that that kind of goes more with the surface that they struck. And that's probably one of the most important things besides distances. What surface did they strike? You know, was it did they you know fall into a pile of rubber tires or did they hit the cement and then what body parts were impacted with the fall uh, you know did they did they hit you know straight on their foot or did they hit their backside or did they go head first what exactly happened and that can kind of cue us into what kind of trauma situation we might be dealing with for penetrating trauma, we want to be thinking about different kinds of velocity. And, do you know, do we have a low velocity, medium, or high velocity? The high velocity, we have cavitation. And as you care for a victim of a gunshot wound, remember that tissue damage can be more widespread than surface wound indicates. So, you know, just because you're looking at a small little bullet hole doesn't necessarily mean that you have a small wound throughout the entire area so just something to keep in mind and then uh, finally we have blast injuries for the blast injuries you have uh, primary blasts 
primary blast is a pressure wave. So this isn't necessarily the the blast itself, but uh, it, it it's the shock wave. So this could be the the gas that uh, containing organ rupture, paper bag syndrome. So basically this can cause internal injuries right off the bat. Then you have the secondary blast which is actually the flying debris. A lot of the newer bombs will make uh, lots of nails and shrapnel will be placed inside of them and when this bomb goes off you'll have all of those objects that just start getting thrown all over the place. And then you have the tertiary blast where the thrown victim impacts. And these are injuries due to impact with another object. So, you know, this victim is thrown basically into the air. And then when he hits something, that's the tertiary blast. So again, you have the primary blast right here with the pressure waves, the secondary blast with flying debris, and then the tertiary blast where the thrown victim impacts something else. In the last slide, we'll be discussing resource determination. So for mass casualty incidents, when you encounter a mass casualty incident, determine the number of patients should take place prior to assessing each patient specifically. So how many patients do we have? And the reason being is because we'll need to start thinking of what kinds of resources it is that we can bring to the scene. Apologize for that. And then we have hazardous materials. Those are going to determine what types of resources that we might need. And then special rescue. You know, is this a mountain rescue? Is it a water rescue? Do Who do we need to get into this scene to help out with the situation? And then what kind of weather are we experiencing? If we're experiencing inclement weather, we could be having specific situations where we need more uh, resources to come to the scene so that they can assist with moving patients in and out. Is there lightning? And, you know, also special cir circumstances. Again, this goes along with weather. Calling for additional units to respond to the scene, if possibly necessary, should be done as soon as possible and sometimes prior to patient contact upon visual inspection from your unit. Now, this is important to get these resources going because you can start making an impact on that scene from the second that you see it. So if you know when you pull up that you have many, many patients to deal with, it is important to try and get as many people as you possibly can to the scene to assist as soon as possible. Uh, when you you know, get in there and you find out it might be significantly less, it's always easier to scale back down than it is to you know, bump, bump up more and more. So again, very important to call for resources as soon as possible. And that'll do it for this particular section.